Good evening, everyone. I'm Jordan Spivey, joined by that. Travis Spivey. And in today's video, we will be going over Darwin's Theory of Evolution 101, so let's do this. We will start off the video by talking about evolution by natural selection. Darwin read Thomas Malthus's work on overpopulation and realized that if there were too many members of a population then they would have to compete for limited food and resources. The big question he thought about was who would win in the struggle for survival. Let's take a look at variation within a species. Darwin hypothesized that some of the variations or natural differences that certain organisms have within their population gives them a better chance of survival in their environment. When an organism survives and reproduces, the overall population or species survives. So let's take a look at the natural variations within this beetle population. If you notice, you have green colored beetles and you have brown colored beetles. If you take a look at this bird right here, it's easy for this bird to spot the green colored beetles, so it eats these beetles. So if you look in this first generation, we have two green colored beetles and then three brown colored beetles. But if you notice in this second generation, there are more brown colored beetles than there are green colored beetles. Why? Because there is a variation with the brown colored beetles that gives them a better chance of surviving in this environment because they're able to blend in more with it. And then if you take a look at it, look at this third generation right here. Notice by the time we get to this third generation, we have seven brown colored beetles and only one green colored beetles because their natural variation of color actually gives the brown colored beetles a competitive advantage. But overall, it allows the entire beetle population to survive and reproduce. Now let's take a look at these two wolves and I want you to answer one question. Which one of these wolves would have a better chance of survival in this environment? I want you to take 30 seconds to think about this and talk about this with your peers and then have a conversation with your teacher about this. Let's take a look at adaptations, which are any heritable characteristic that increases an organism's ability to survive and reproduce in its environment. So adaptations could be a cheetah's non-retractable claws, a chameleon's ability to camouflage to blend in with its surroundings, or an owl's silent flight feathers. So let's take a look at this chameleon right here. And if you notice, this chameleon is almost the exact same color as the leaves and the branches in this environment. So this gives it an ability to actually escape or be able to hide from predators and also be able to hide from unsuspecting prey as well. Now let's direct our attention towards the owl adaptations on the right. And owls are known to be extremely effective and efficient predators. So now let's take a look at some of the adaptations that allows them to do so. First, they have totally silent flight feathers that muffle the sound of air passing through their feathers. This means that it makes it almost impossible for prey to hear owls coming. Second, they have large eyes set forward on their head for great depth perception for hunting. They have retinas that are packed with low light sensitive rods to see at night. This basically means that owls have very good vision and can track their prey in some of any environment and conditions. Third, their flexible neck allows them to follow prey as they move. And then fourth, they have very sharp talons to catch prey on the fly. So this means that owls have the ability to catch their prey and keep it moving. All of these adaptations give owls their ability to survive and reproduce in their environment. And that brings us into our next topic, which is survival of the fittest. Now we have this term or phrase thrown around a lot, but let's talk specifically about what survival of the fittest is. So first, fitness describes how well an organism can survive and reproduce in its environment. Organisms with adaptations that work well and are best suited for the environment can survive and reproduce at a high rate, which means more of the genetics and adaptation gets passed on to their offspring and also gets passed on into the next generation of their species. These organisms have high fitness. Now, organisms that are not best suited for the environment either die or reproduce very few offspring, which means few of their genetics gets passed on to their offspring, and few of their genetics and adaptations gets passed on into the next generation of their species. These organisms have low fitness. The chances of survival and reproductive rates of these organisms is called survival of the fittest. Let's take a look at this female lion, for example. So now this female lion has a very important job. Her job is actually hunt, capture, and kill this zebra. So 
Going back to the topic of survival of the fittest, this female lion must have several special adaptations that allows her to be able to hunt capture and kill the zebra so first she needs to be very fast she needs to be agile so that means she needs to be able to change direction quickly and she must be very strong so if she has all of these special adaptations then she'll be able to kill the zebra and this gives her more of a likelihood of passing on her genes and genetics into the next generation while the zebra will not be able to do so this is an example of survival of the fittest so piggybacking off the idea of survival of the fittest, let's take a look at another organism, which is the cheetah. Now the cheetah is known to be one of the top predators in the world for its special adaptations. So let's take a look at them. So first, the cheetah's slight frame and long legs allow it to reach speeds of up to 70 miles per hour and change direction with great agility despite their speed. So that means cheetahs can actually run 70 miles per hour in a very short amount of time and, cannot, and they can also change direction even though that they're going at such a very high speed. This makes it easier for them to capture very quick and nimble prey. And then the cheetah spots help it blend into the tall grass or the speckled light when resting up in an acacia tree. So it makes it even more difficult or challenging for prey to actually see the cheetah coming. And then their very long tail is used to balance the body while running and leaping. So this allows them to be able to change direction very quickly. And then they're the only cat that do not have retractable claws that pull in when not in use. So that means that their claws are always out and always ready to pounce on their prey. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other adaptations. Cheetahs have a very flexible spine that allows them to actually bend and this actually helps them when they run. And then they have very good eyesight which allows them to see for very far distances. And then look at their nose. Their nose is specially adapted to sniff out and capture prey. And then if we take a look at their paws, we already discussed that their paws never retract. And like I said earlier, their spine is flexible, so this makes their body, their overall body, even more flexible. And then one special adaptation that they have is that their legs actually spend more time in the air than on the ground when they're chasing after prey. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So if you notice, if you look at this cheetah running right here, notice that their legs, actually all four of their legs are actually in the air as they're running. So this allows them to cover more and more distance as they run and capture prey. Let's take a look at how natural selection works. So first, there are more individuals produced each generation that can survive. Now this is actually a good thing because the more individuals that you have that are produced, then the higher the likelihood that species has of surviving, just in case some of the organisms die off. Then there are phenotypic variations that exist among individuals and the variation is heritable. Those individuals with heritable traits better suited to the environment will survive. So this basically means that there are physical differences that exist among the individuals in a population or a species. Now these physical differences can also give certain organisms in that population a better chance of surviving. So let's take a look at this. So we have a population of mice that has moved into a new area where the rocks are very dark. Due to natural genetic variation, some mice are black while others are tan. So let's count the number of mice in this first generation. So we have five brown mice in this first generation and we have three black mice in this first generation. Some mice are eaten by birds. So the tan mice are more visible to predatory birds than black mice. Thus, tan mice are eating at a higher frequency than black mice. Only the surviving mice reach reproductive age and leave offspring. So if you notice, it's easier for this bird to spot the tan mice versus the black mice due to the black mice is being able to blend in with this environment. So in this second generation, we have two brown mice and now we have three black mice. And then if you look, the mice reproduce giving the next generation. And because black mice had a higher chance of leaving offspring than tan mice, the next generation contains a higher frequency of black mice than the previous generation. So if you notice, now we're only down to two brown mice right here. And then we have seven black mice. If you notice, the frequency of black mice has actually increased while the frequency of brown mice has decreased. Why? Because if you look at natural selection, these black mice have a better chance of surviving in their environment due to the genetic color or the genetic fur variation. 
Now let's take a look at common descent and descent with modification. Common descent refers to a common ancestor of a particular group of organisms. So for example, the gray wolf is the direct ancestor of dogs. So if you take a look at this picture right here, if you notice all of these different types of dogs right here, and if you notice all of these dogs are located in different countries and different parts of the world, but all of these dogs have one thing in common, is that they originally descended from the gray wolf, which is their most common ancestor. Now let's move on to descent with modification. And this is the passing of traits over time from generation to generation by parents to offspring that provide reproductive advantages and become more common in a population. One of the most famous examples of this is the Galapagos Island finches. So if you take a look at the picture of these four finches, you will notice that each finch has a different shape and size B. This is because each of the finches came from a different island environment which had different types of food available. The size and shape of the finch beaks determine whether or not they will have a high success rate of eating the type of food available in that island environment. So over time and several generations, beneficial traits were passed down from parents to offspring to provide the next generation with a better chance of surviving and reproducing in that environment. Common descent can also be traced back to a single common ancestor of all living organisms by looking at the genetic code of all living organisms. This means that we all have something in common in our genetic code and makeup. So let's take a look at this tree of life right here. So if you notice all of these if different species and all of these different organisms, if you notice at the very bottom, they all have something in common because they're all connected to this common ancestor right here. And this lets us know that on some very basic level that we all have something in common with our DNA. So the many types of biodiversity we have on our planet can be contributed to natural selection and adaptations made by organisms based upon their environment over many years from generation to generation. Now it is time for your check for understanding. You may use your notes and the knowledge you have gained from watching this video to answer the following questions. I'm Jordan Spivey joined by my dad, Chavis Spivey, and if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And also, check us out at our website at www.fathersoninnovations.com, and also check us out on our online courses at www.fathersoninnovations.com forward slash courses. And finally, also go ahead and download our app, which is available in the Apple and Google Play Store, and the name of the app is FSI Courses. I hope you enjoyed the video everyone and make sure you have a good, bright, and positive, and peaceful day. Peace. Peace.